by the name of Ali ibn Musa al Rida, the son of Jafar al Sadiq, the son of Muhammad al Bakr, the son of Zain al Abidin, who was the son of Al Hussein ibn Ali, radiallahu anhum ajma'in made a definition for us that was passed down to the scholars in regards to what are the signs for our comprehension? What should be our litmus test and how we understand the spirit of the sunnah as it applies to our activism? Qala Ali rahimahullah ta'ala min alama til fiqh and hilm wal ilm well, well salt. The signs of those who have comprehension of this deen and of its application, there are three of these signs in Islam. First, to have al hum which is forbearance. Brothers, can some of the brothers come a little closer, please? To, to the front. Side up. Give this a little room. Forbearance. This is, this is spiritual, this is to be understood in the spiritual realm. A spiritual connection with Allah that brings about forbearance, which guides people in their actions to be more gentle in their actions, and also guides people in terms of having spiritual insight, al hum The next one is al ilm which is knowledge this is based not on the spiritual level, but on the intellectual level. So having a spiritual connection with Allah in regard to how we conduct ourselves in the, in the social world, based upon our spirituality first, then knowledge, then wasamt. Wasamt is an action, but in fact is a restraint. Asamt means being quiet, shutting up. There's a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that says, whoever believes in Allah in the last day, speak a good word or be quiet. Keep your mouth shut. This comes from the same word, assault. So we have spirituality, <clears throat> which then leads to knowledge, which then leads to a particular action. In this case, it is restraint. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, in regards to our activism, we also must be very careful in terms of the type of activism that we get involved in or certain endeavors that we get involved in and the spirit in which we get involved in those. I mentioned one extreme in terms of the domestication of religion. There's another extreme called relativism. There's spiritual or religious relativism or some say truth relativism. In other words, Everything that people says is true. Everything is true. We all have our truths, and you have your truth, and I have my truth, but they're all equally true. No. According to Islam, this is incorrect. One of the names of Allah is al haq He is the truth. He is the reality. And anything that goes outside of, legis out of what he legislated to be true, since he has more right to say what is true and what is just because he is our creator. He is the one who created the heavens and the earth. Allah praise be to him who created the heavens and the earth and made the various stages of darkness and the lighting. He is the one who has the right to legislate what is fair, what is but what is just and what is balanced. So everything that people come to us and say that it is true or it is reality, just because they may define it as a righteous cause does not necessarily mean that we are obligated to get involved in that coalition to join them in that thing, which in fact could be unjust. Because brothers and sisters, we are now living in the time. We are living in the time when those things that were once historically considered mahruf are now considered munkar and vice versa. Those things that are considered to be social, good, that cultivate the good life for the human being, 
People have made those things unacceptable. They have made those things bad. And vice versa, those things or certain things that are being propagated today amongst some of our colleagues as good things, as righteous things, in the history of man, these things have always been, been seen and been defied, and especially from the prophets of God, starting with Adam, extending to Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus Christ, to Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, peace and blessings be upon all of them, did not approve of. Let me give you a couple of, of, of examples in the conclusion of the first part of this chutbah. We just recently had a situation here in Michigan where a law was passed barring smoking in restaurants. And some people in the Muslim community said that this is going to negatively affect our business because we have hookah bars and we have smoking in some of our restaurants and that they said that this was an anti-Muslim or anti-Arab law because it's stopping the smoking of hookah or argila, another name for this. Now, these people are Muslims getting on TV saying this, asking certain organizations to join in this. There are two problems with this. And we have to be sensitive because there are people who we could like, we could love, who we're, we do coalitions with on, on certain things, but we have to have the Islamic basis of when we engage or when we stay away. This is part of the definition of Kuntum Khairu Ummatun Tukrijat Lin Nasi Ta'munubu Mahruf for Tahanu Munkar or Tukmun Billah. You are the best community evolved for mankind because you enjoy El Mahruf, what is good, what is right, what brings about goodness in society. You forbid that which is antisocial or place barriers in front of the antisocialism and you believe in God. This is our criteria. One, the my Muslims don't even make up 5% of people who own restaurants, so how could we go out saying this is anti-Muslim law? Two, even if one wants to smoke, and most scholars of Islam, if they don't say smoking is haram, it's makru, it places the health of other people who don't smoke in danger, even if they're singing a non-smoking section. And we Muslims, one of the primary hadith that makes up the ethics of Islam, that's mutawatir, that's sahih, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لي أخي ما يحب لي نفسي. يحب لي أخي ما يحب لي نفسي. None of you believes until he loves for his brother in humanity what he loves for himself. And there's another narration, من الخير. That which is good or excellent. Meaning that we are, we are truly believers in God not only do we love for our brother and sister in humanity what we love for ourselves, we want them to have even more than us. We strive that if someone has something, we cheer them on in their excellence. We want them to be excellent. We don't want them to fail. We don't want any harm to coming to them, including their health. So why in the world would Muslims with beards and hijab be going on trying to advocate for smoking in the restaurants. Why would we do this? Another example, brothers and sisters in Islam. <clears throat> Allah Azza wa Jal clearly says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal nasu taqu rabbukum ladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha. In another section of the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnaakum min dhakrin wa untha. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, O oh people, surely we created you, O oh people, have taqwa for your Lord. He who created you from a single soul, and from this single soul, it's mate. Literally in Arabic, min has al her mate, but we understand this soul to be Adam alayhi salam. Literally in Arabic, this, this one soul, this Adam, alayhi salam, actually in Arabic language, if you know Arabic, is discussed in the feminine, not the masculine. So we create Adam, and then for Adam, his mate, Eve. And then scatter countless men and women. Then Allah Azza wa Jalla says, O oh people, surely we created you from one male and one female. So Allah Azza wa Jalla has given us 
the natural relationship for the family. A man, a woman, 